Nigeria's 2019 elections are finally over. This year's election was the sixth in the 20 years since Africa's biggest democracy returned to civilian rule. Or are they? With so many inconclusive elections in states and pending court cases, including one filed by presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar, there is widespread belief that the elections were rigged. But just how easy is it to rig elections? How would a politician go about it? We investigate. There are essentially seven major ways to rig an election. 1. Postpone the elections. Nigeria's 2019 elections were supposed to hold on February the 16th. Millions of citizens traveled home to their villages to vote. And then, on February 16th, just after 2 a.m., INEC released a statement announcing the elections will be postponed by a week. This was a difficult decision for the commission to take, but necessary for the successful delivery of elections and the consolidation of our democracy. You might ask, how is that rigging? Well, building up to the elections, there was energy and momentum and many think tanks expected record voter turnout. In political science history, record turnout rarely favors the incumbent. That means the record turnout was not likely to favor Buhari. With the postponement of the elections, many voters could not afford to travel again and apathy was on the rise. Besides, in developing countries, opposition parties and candidates do not usually have access to the kind of campaign funding available to the ruling party. Therefore, by postponing the polls, incumbent parties hope to stretch opposition funds and then splash heavily few days or weeks to the election to sway voters. So, postponing an election could be seen as legal rigging. Two by votes. This one is simple. Approach potential voters, give them money to make sure they don't vote for your opponent. Votes can be bought for as low as 500 naira. Also, government programs such as conditional cash transfers being undertaken so close to elections are technically vote buying. Some countries like the United States and the United Kingdom have laws preventing incumbents from embarking on such programs to entice voters. Three snatch ballot boxes political parties use thugs to snatch ballot boxes after the votes have been cast this ensures that the areas where the opponent is winning will not count four burn ballot boxes why stop at snatching why not set it on fire in front of voters instead security officials are powerless in these instances five compromise party agents Agents employed by parties are effectively their guard dogs at polling stations. For example, Party Z agent is hired to ensure that Party Z is not rigged out at any polling booth. 6. Compromise the military and security officials. The military and other security officials like the police can chase away possible voters of opponents. They can also provide shield for ballot box snatchers, no questions asked. 7. Declare polls inconclusive why not inconclusive elections are great right INEC is great at this last september during ocean state's governorship elections the pdp was leading in the polls until INEC declared the polls inconclusive after it was concluded the apc was declared winner really fishy the strategy is simple rerun elections are limited to a few polling units and areas and incumbent candidates can then flood the places with cash inducements and security officials to buy the votes or at worst intimidate voters and stop them from voting now six states elections have been declared inconclusive too so were nigeria's 2019 elections rigged we'll leave that one for INEC and the courts there you have it seven ways to rig an election